Hello, I am so excited to chat with you all today. Um, my name is Valerie Warner and I hope to share a super encouraging message with y'all um, about motherhood and the renewed joy there. Um, but before we dive in, I just wanna pray and invite the Holy Spirit to fill me up with his words and speak to you guys today. Um, Lord, thank you so much for this opportunity, Father. Um, I just thank you that I get to share this message with women. And Lord, I pray that you would speak through me. I pray that you would empty um, my mind of my words and instead fill me up with your words, Father, and help me speak encouragement um, for the mom who's listening right now, um, just directly to her heart, Lord. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so if you guys don't know me, I'm Valerie Warner, and um, I run a company called Valmarie Paper. We sell prayer journals, so prayer is very important to me, and we that's why I gotta kick things off like that. Um, but I live in South Louisiana with my husband, Tyler, and our two little girls, Vivi and Vanna. They are five and a half and um, almost three years old. And I just feel like um, so excited to share this message today because it has truly transformed my life. And I will try not to sound like an info commercial uh, or an infomercial saying that to you, um, but I'm super excited and I hope that what you take away today will be something that you can use in your motherhood as soon as you get home and as soon as your first kid throws their first tantrum or um, the first um, teenager says something disobedient. I pray that these things will change that quickly for you um, just to start um, changing our mindset and our thoughts. Um, I'll start off by telling you that on my own, I am a naturally melancholy girl. Um, the Lord has been so gracious to me in this journey of motherhood and helping me um, discover exactly the things that have caused me to be grumpy. When I tell you that I cannot watch Titanic, I cannot watch Twilight, um, just because the town is dreary, I am serious. Those things suck me down so quickly. And whenever I was pregnant and just very excited about motherhood, not pregnancy, I knew that like that was not for me, um, but I, was so excited for motherhood. And as you start to tell people, um, you get lots of lots of um, excitement around that, but you also get lots of people who just wanna be real with you. They just wanna tell you, make sure that you're not being naive and that you know that motherhood is going to be hard. And I don't know a mom out there who doesn't know that, but, um, but we for some reason feel this need to remind each other that motherhood is hard. In my experience, just hearing people say like that you weren't gonna have a conversation with your husband, a full conversation with him until your kids moved out of the house or sleep a full night's uh, sleep until they got went into high school and started sleeping longer than you do. Um, but I let those things kind of suck me down. Um, but the Lord was so gracious. I feel like he kept the, like this spark of hope alive in me. And he even humored me because um, while I was pregnant, he gave me this audacious goal, dare I say cocky goal, to, uh, um, to experience motherhood differently and to talk about it differently. And the reason I say this is cocky is because I had not experienced a day of motherhood. I don't know why I thought I was gonna just be able to magically do it differently, but he put that on my heart. And as I'm learning, uh, or as I've learned over the last few years, um, that spark kept me from, um, it just kept a hope in me alive to know that there was more to motherhood than what I saw out there in the world. And he quickly gave me eyes to see the things that were dragging me down, the things that were planting a seed of discouragement in me. And um, that's kind of what I'm gonna share with you guys today is these things that are very subtle, but that they can pull us down very quickly. We're gonna just start off by talking about um, what the world says motherhood is like. And I'm actually going to just share a little bit of the intro. And you guys are gonna be very familiar with this. Um, the world's sentiments about motherhood seem innocent at first glance. Things like moms can't function without coffee, a trip to Target with the kids rivals a day in prison. Is it 1.30 yet? The only way moms can get a break is to hide out in the bathroom. And if you have a white couch, your child is bound to destroy it. Other things that we hear from the world are that moms are tired, moms are emotional, moms are control freaks, and moms are terrible friends. 
I don't know about you, but I cannot go on Facebook or um, see memes about motherhood without seeing this discouraging message. And the problem is those things are a part of motherhood, but they should not define our motherhood. Of course, motherhood's hard. Of course, there's gonna be sleepless nights and yoga pants and coffee and all of these things. But when we define it as, it is when we define motherhood as these stereotypes, we are of course gonna find discouragement. And here's the first simple truth that I want you to get today. Our enemy's plan is simple. It is so simple. He is not out to make us hardened criminals. He's not out to tell us anything that is going to just take us on this like path of destruction to, um, you know, bank robberies, anything crazy like that. All he's doing is trying to get us focused on these shiny things that the world tells us is it for motherhood. And if he does that, he can not only like make us experience our own motherhood in a discouraging way, but he also keeps us from pointing others to Jesus when they see the fullness of our motherhood. This isn't just about living a mediocre motherhood. This is about living in slavery when the Lord has set us free from that. If you are a believer, you have give, been given the gift of salvation. You have been given the gift of eternity with the Lord, but so many of us aren't even living our earthly life with the Lord. And you know, obviously we know that salvation is what um, it's about eternity, but I, don't believe for a second that the Lord is holding out goodness for us till we get to heaven to see him. He is goodness for us right here on earth. And part of that is living our motherhoods with more joy and following what he says about motherhood instead of the world. Now, here's the tricky thing about why we, why the message of the world is so prevalent and why it's something that I wrote a whole book about and feel like we need to learn about. Um, it's because we're living in the world. We are surrounded by a place that's not our home. This message is everywhere. We can't escape it. And we're not going to escape it on earth. And that's fine. Um, but the Lord gives us tools and, and knowledge. And um, he just guides us and shows us what we can do right now to live set apart in this world. I'm going to read Romans 12 too, and this is the anthem of Grumpy Mom. Um, it is, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And I also really love the way the message version says this. It says, don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit in without even thinking. This is what is the basis for the whole book, Grumpy Mom Takes a Holiday. We need to know right now, the first thing is just that we can transform our thinking and we can set new habits. And one thing that I love about habits and retraining our thoughts is that to change a habit, it's not about how much time passes. Um, if you wanna change a habit, you know, people talk about 21 days, 31 days, whatever it is. It's not about the number of days, it's about the number of times you are re, re um, thinking about that thought and replacing it with something new. You're basically paving a new road. So if there is a habit that you wanna create and it's something that you would do every day, once a day, and a habit that you would do once a week, and a habit that you do multiple times a day, the one that you do multiple times a day will come more naturally quicker. And for motherhood, I can guarantee you that you are gonna get multiple opportunities every day to retrain your thinking. So that's why this message is so hopeful. The change that we can make is, um, it's possible and it doesn't take months to figure out or months to go through. Um, the keys are gonna be to know first and foremost that the world is not telling us the truth all the time um, or ever, um, that truth is gonna be from the Lord, but to just know when we start realizing that I have to retrain my thoughts. Whenever I see things on Facebook, I have to take that thought captive and see what the Lord says about it instead. When we start recognizing that the things that we hear um, are not just default true things, um, we're going to see change even before we figure out exactly what the right thoughts are. We're going to start recognizing that and seeing change. Um, the second thing that we need to do is to recognize the lies. And that is going to be something that we're going to go over in a second that I really hope will be helpful. But just 
as we study our word, as we study um, more of what God says, um, we're going to start realizing what the lies are. Um, and we also just need to pray for an awareness to that, that the Lord would give us wisdom and um, prompt our spirit to recognize when things are not true. The third thing that we're going to do is replace those lies with truth. And these are all coming from the Bible. These are not fancy things that I've come up with. This is straight truth from the Word of God. And um, as we do this, we are going to be filled up with His truth. We are going to be able to walk through situations that the world would just be devastated by. Nap times that get interrupted, tantrums that ha happen in Target, um, our day just being ruined or slowed down by a two-year-old. All of these things have the making of so much frustration when we see them as um, just things that, oh man, motherhood's just so hard and this is just, this is just reason enough to be a victim, a martyr, or just feel so broken by it and discouraged or just kind of resolved that motherhood's just not going to be very, very fun. It's going to be something you kind of all just have to go through. That is not what the Lord says about motherhood. And we know, I'm not going to convince you that it's not hard, but we know that that's not all God has for us. The world's definition is paper thin, and we cannot see that as the ultimate definition of motherhood, or it will sink us, and we will experience so much discouragement in our motherhood. Okay, so here is two things that I want to share with you before we cover five different lies and the truths to replace them with. One of the best things about this is that it does not require an all or nothing transformation. It is not about fixing motherhood. I still yell. I still get grumpy. I still have my hard days. But the thing is, those moments are much less intense. They, are, they last for a much shorter time frame and they happen less often. Um, so you can know that when, when you have those moments when you yell, there is still redemption in that and you can still turn them around um, and not feel like, okay, well, I, I didn't get it. It's not required. Um, I can't promise that you won't ever yell again and any book that could promise you that is not telling the truth. So um, I want you to feel hope in that and know that like, yeah, you're still gonna have hard days and, but this is not a false promise kind of book um, or message that I'm sharing with you today. The other thing that I want to tell you is that this is what we have heard from several people who have already read the book. As you start to identify these lies, you start to realize that maybe there are more grumpy moments in your life than you realized. And that can be discouraging at first. It can be frustrating to feel like, man, I didn't even realize I had this um, angst in me so often. But this is the first step to real transformation. And the same way um, it's a message in AA and different things, if we're going to make real change happen, we have to acknowledge and notice what the issue is. And that's what we're doing here. Do not get discouraged. This is part of the process. Do not feel like that's like where you stop and like you're just hopeless. You're not. You are making, you're making um, realizations that are going to change your motherhood. So... Let's dive in. We are going to talk about five different lies, the truth, and I'm going to share an example just so that you can start seeing this in your own life and just to make it very um, evident whenever you're going through your day, you can start noticing, okay, that's an example of what Valerie's talking about. Um, and the way that we have broken up the book Grumpy Mom, which I didn't even show you guys, but this is Grumpy Mom, um, there are five different sections in the book based on five different types of triggers that we can experience. Most of us are going to experience one trigger more than the other. So it's not, as you read all 20, you're not gonna say like, everyone happens to you. You might see some that you're like, I don't have that one, thank you Jesus. You know, you're glad that um, those moments aren't triggered by um, frustrations or anything like that. But there are gonna be some, uh, There, there's likely going to be one that is where you see most of your biggest grumpy moments, which I think is neat because we can isolate that and focus on that. Um, but there are the five different triggers are, um, the sections are, it's surrender, um, which addresses a, all control related triggers. Replenish addresses the source related triggers. Develop addresses the growth related triggers. 
Connect addresses relationship-related triggers, and Thrive addresses noise-related triggers. And if you want, we actually have a quiz. Um, I'll put the link in here, but we have a quiz that helps you identify what your trigger actually is so that you can focus on that section. Um, but we're gonna go through one of each from, the, from each section, and you might, you might find the one that causes so many of your grumpy moments just right here in this video. And I truly hope this video is so valuable and that it will help you immediately go make change. Um, just feel, feel some hope as you conquer motherhood. But we're gonna start. The first one is related to comforts. And the lie says, my life is supposed to be comfortable and when it's not, I should be frustrated. Here is the actual truth. God calls me to live counterculture, not comfortable. I can do hard things. Now, I will tell you, I like my comforts a lot. I love a good cozy blanket. I like my husband jokes, cozy was like a concept that we have ingrained in our girls from a very, very early age. If it's raining outside, Vanna, if we're driving in the car, Vivi will say, Mama, it's raining. Oh, it'll be the perfect day to just go snuggle on the couch with a snack and watch a movie. Like we know how to do comfort very well over here. But the problem is, is that as moms, we can live for our comfort so much and feel so interrupted by our, by the lack of our comforts. And I'll read you a quote from the book. The problem isn't the inevitable moments of discomfort. It's that I am not prepared for them. I have to stop believing that trials are the exception to the rule when really they're just part of life. And I don't know about you, but it, whenever I start really thinking about that and thinking, I expect life to be easy. I expect it to be comfortable. I expect it to be a certain way. And when it's not, I get frustrated. I get frustrated at my kids who can't do things as quickly as I would like. Um, or I get frustrated whenever I don't get to just wake up slowly or comfortably. And in the book, I talk about Paul and just, I just wonder what he would think if he was preaching today in our time, time frame, hearing us complain about some of the things we complain about without a prison cell in sight. Um, he, knew, he knew discomfort, but he also knew incredible joy and incredible con contentment in the Lord. And I think in our, in our world today, we demand this comfort. Um, and whenever it's threatened, we feel like we have a right to just be so frustrated by it. Um, and as I have learned to r soak my mind in this truth, I feel like the Lord has, has helped me to actually enjoy my comforts more as well because I know that they're not just a demand or something that I'm entitled to, but they're something that I get to enjoy and feel grateful for. So that is our first one, comforts. Next, from the replenish section, we're gonna talk about the lie of satisfaction. The lie says, I need coffee to get through mornings, chocolate to get to nap time, and wine to get me through bedtime. The truth says, nothing but Jesus will satisfy for long term. I will tell you, chocolate is my weakness. I don't drink coffee, but chocolate is something that I have found so much solace in, or tried to find solace in throughout my child, my motherhood. Um, for a while, every single time my daughter cried to go down for her nap, I would literally salivate for chocolate. It was like a, it directly correlated with, she's crying, I have to have chocolate. I'm not kidding. It was, um, it, that sounds like a small thing, but that just shows where my heart was and what I was looking to satisfy me. I would literally, at one point, I remember running to my cabinet and just ripping open the chocolate like it was just gonna like satisfy me like a drug and just like mellow me out and calm me down. And it's funny to talk about that and we know that like we kind of treat it like that whenever we talk about coffee, like don't talk to me until I've had my coffee or you know, wine is something that like once our kids go to bed, we need wine to decompress or like finally relax. And the Lord created these things and we can enjoy these things, but we're not going to enjoy them when we look to them to satisfy what only God can satisfy. I truly feel that when we go to God and know that he is the one who's going to satisfy us, 
those things will bring us joy. We will enjoy coffee. We will enjoy chocolate. I seriously, I enjoy chocolate almost every day now. And it is, it is a sweet time in my day, but it is not saving me from what I am hoping to escape. Next, let's talk about the lie of refinement. The lie says, I am a mess. And the truth says, I am being refined. If you have spent any time on the internet, you know that being called a hot mess mom is something that we use just very um, easily. We can identify with feeling like we're just a mess. We don't know what we're doing. We're just kind of surviving motherhood. If our kids end up alive, you know, like if we keep our kids alive for the day, we are just, that's enough. We've got it figured out. Um, or we have it figured out enough. But when we talk about this hot mess message, we are implying that there's an alternative of perfection. Um, and I know that kind of seems like a jump, but the reality is that we are being refined and what we see as a mess is just part of this process. It's not something that is in direct conflict with who we are supposed to be. It is the process of God changing us and creating us to be who we are supposed to be. If we see every time we yell, as a mistake or as a flaw to, to this perfection, this perfect mom that we're supposed to be, it's going to affect the way we interact with our kids. It's gonna fill us with a guilt and a shame that is going to end up all over everything. It's gonna come out in the way that we talk, the way that we live. We cannot live full of joy when we feel awful for who we are. If we can start recognizing that what God is doing, the mistakes that I make, that everything that I do is part of God changing me and growing me to look more like Him. And if we can even recognize that the mistakes that I make are opportunities for the Lord to show my kids what it, grace means, we will experience motherhood with so much joy and this lifted burden off of our shoulders. I know I pray a prayer often and I just say, Lord, let my mistakes point my kids to you. Because as I realize, or as they get to see a mom say, honey, I'm sorry I yelled, like I should not have done that. I need grace just like you do when you make mistakes and I have to ask for forgiveness too. We are giving, we're showing them a picture of a God who gives grace. If we expect to be perfect, if we wanna be perfect, um, because we don't want our kids to see somebody who makes mistakes because we think they'll make them, they will never learn that they need grace. And um, I, I hope that sticks with you. I hope that you're, you will feel a relief and a release of those burdens knowing that refinement in you is happening. Um, and it is, we don't need to identify as a hot mess. We need to identify as people that are being refined to look more and more like God, but who are not gods ourselves. So obviously we won't look like that today. Okay, so the next one is from the connect section and it is talking about the lie of offense. The lie is everyone says such offensive things. And the truth is, I can choose whether I'm offended by such things. And I'm gonna share a quote with you guys from the book. It says, being, offended, being offendable stems from pride and from being unwilling to separate ourselves from what someone else is saying. We insert ourselves into every comment from a friend, every blog post, every grievance aired. We ask ourselves, what does this mean to me? What does this say about me? How does this affect me? We place ourselves at the center of something that likely has nothing to do with us. And how can this not affect our motherhood? If we see something a mom says and take offense to it, um, and if we interpret everything that somebody else does as a reason to see how it affects me and what's going on in my world, and did that mom mean to be mean to me? Or she's talking about me, she just won't say it to my face, different things like that. This is gonna come out in our kids. I cannot tell you how many times this has happened where I will look at Facebook, see something that offends me, and then the, first, the next person to talk to me is not the person that I hope will get my wrath from however I'm feeling. It's my three-year-old who simply wants me to play Legos with her. 
And this is why this chapter feels funny to be in the book, or this feels like a funny truth to think about. But when we live looking for an offense from other people, we are going to be grumpy. We are going to see how everything somebody else says relates to us when that is not what God is calling us to do. The last lie is from the Thrive section, and it's all about hurry. Here's the lie. My circumstances cause me to feel so hurried. The truth. My soul can experience calm even in the middle of busy circumstances. And I want to share just an example with you guys of what this has looked like in my life. Um, I have spent too many days trying to get out the house and trying just anxiously getting my, trying to get my kids to keep moving. And what I have realized after I feel like the Lord has just been pressing these, these things on me is that I can spend 20 minutes distracted on my phone and then realize, oh my gosh, it's time to go. And then I go to my kids who have never gotten dressed in less than 10 minutes. Um, and I demand that they hurry up and get dressed in three minutes. And this is crazy because it has caused so much frustration of why is my kid not hurrying up? Um, I, I've yelled over things like this and I, I have to assume that this is not just in my house. This has probably happened in many houses before, but whenever I replayed the reality that this is a toddler, she cannot react this way, but it's my own, um, speed and hurry and drive. And the fact that I wasted time that's leading me to this. I feel like I've found so much freedom in this. I've been able to give my kids more grace. I've been able to just know that I need to make wiser choices with that, with how we leave the house. And it has made for slower mornings and not necessarily that we don't have to rush sometimes. Don't get me wrong, we still have to rush. But I have done so with more love and grace than I ever was before. And with an attitude that is not angry and frustrated at how this has messed up my life or my day. Um, I hope that makes sense. Um, that is one that just in a very real way has transformed our mornings and helped us start our days um, not on this wrong foot of just pushing out the door to, to try to um, be somewhere on time. So that's it for our five lies and truths. I hope those were impactful for you. Um, I really hope that this message today fills you with hope. I said hope a lot, but I do hope this message fills you with hope that transformation is possible and that these lies are innocent. They they sneak in in little funny memes. They sneak in in little conversations that we have with friends. We try to um, we try to unite as moms so many times, and a lot of times it's under these stereotypes because it's easy. It's kind of like just talking about the weather or traffic. Um, we can talk about like, oh yeah, I didn't have time to get dressed this morning, you know, mom life or whatever like that. But I, I hope that this helps see how those little conversations that we can have can seep in, leave a discontentment in our heart and help us believe lies or that, that are causing us to believe lies that are then affecting us in those quiet moments when we try to hide out in the bathroom, um, or just feel like I can't do this. And, um, like I said, it, they feel like very innocent conversations, um, but I feel like I'm going to go back actually to Romans 12, and we're just going to end here with this thought. The New Living Translation, I love it. It says, don't copy the behavior and customs of the world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. And how beautiful is that, guys? He's literally telling us, I have a good life for you. I have good plans for you. The way that you're going to live it out is by ignoring what the world is saying about, about life and following what I'm telling you. And that is my hope for you guys. Um, I'm so excited for the transformation that I feel like is possible when we when we truly think differently than the world. And I just want to end in prayer with you guys. 
Father, thank you so much for this time. Thank you so much for using even my jumbled words. I am not a speaker, Lord, but I love this message. And I pray that somebody got something just so um, so helpful out of it, Lord. I pray for motherhood today, all of motherhood for every mom around the world, Lord. We pray that you would revive our hearts, fill us with your joy, fill us with your your peace and your truth, God. Help us to change the conversation that's around us that the world thinks is totally normal, um, but that it's depressing and hollow and empty, Lord. Change us, make us new, God, and let it all point back to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you all so much for joining me. I'm going to leave you guys with a few questions. I'll have them all on the next screen, but I just want to share them with you real quick. Um, these would be great discussion questions. They are, number one, what does it look like to retrain my mind and look at the world's definition of motherhood differently? So what I'm thinking, whenever I think of that question, just what, just practically speaking, what would it look like in your everyday life to start recognizing where your thoughts need to be retrained. Number two, what lies do I personally believe regularly that lead to my grumpiest moments? And then what truth do I need to replace it with? And lastly, just on a, on a very communal, global level, how can we respond as a group of moms and change this conversation of motherhood? Because we know um, just in talking with the moms who have already read Grumpy Mom, um, the biggest question that I got was, okay, now I am experiencing more joy. How do I talk about this with other moms without coming off judgy or like I know what's going on? You know, like I have this all figured out. And the biggest thing that I can say is what you guys are doing right now, going through this, this um, concept together and living this out together, being accountable um, is huge. So I'm proud of you guys, I'm excited for y'all, and I truly hope that um, we will be able to change this conversation um, and help moms feel less inundated by the words of the world and more inspired by the truth of the gospel and the truth that God has has called us to, to seek out. Um, thank y'all so much for your time, I'm so grateful. Um, I hope y'all have a great day.